I just want to share my testimony. I want to testify today because I know that God is real and that he is a good God. From the moment that I was born up until now, I have went through so much suffering that it was unexplainable and it was things that other people couldn't relate to. But I know that there are some people out there that can relate to experiencing suffering because as long as you live in this life, you're going to experience suffering. Let me tell you, I've experienced so much loss, loss of a brother, loss of a father, loss of a sister, so much loss back to back, like the, like Job in the Bible, back to back. I've experienced so much trauma and dysfunction and disappointment and devastation that it caused me to have a dependency on pills where I was dealing with anxiety and depression and, and God delivered me from that. There was times that I didn't even think that I was going to make it. I didn't even think that it was possible for me to get through those things. But let me tell you, I'm standing here today by the grace of God. I've had to walk through so much death all around me. But the Bible says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. God is with you. The world is going in, in a direction. But God is with you. God is with his people. And I know not everybody can relate to the level of suffering, but there are some people that has experienced suffering and God allows the suffering and he allows the evil in this world because he uses it to test us, to try us. The test is not for him to know, it's for you to know that you know because when that moment, when that time comes for the mark of the beast, he wants you to be planted. He wants you to be rooted and grounded in him that you will not waver and you will not bow down to the beast system. He wants your name written in the Lamb's book of life. But the moment we cower down and we desire the things of this world, then we sell out and then we turn our backs on God. God is the reason why I'm standing here today. He is the reason why we move and have our being. He is the oxygen in our lungs. Whether you believe it or not, whether you walk with him or not, his grace is sufficient. His love covers a multitude of sin. And that's the only reason why we are able to live is in him. And that is his grace. Even when people turn their backs on him, even when people decide not to serve him because they feel like, how could God allow these things? How could God allow evil? His thoughts and his ways is higher than ours. And I know that he's still a good God. He's still a good God. And that's why I sing, because I believe. I still believe. Even though I've walked through so much, I mean, homelessness, divorce, everything you could possibly think of, so much loss. And people, when they take a, one look at me, they don't think that I've been through those things because God, he never wanted me to look according to my circumstances. He wants us to represent his glory. That is being a representative of his glory, that even though you walk through so much suffering, you still don't look like what you've been through. That is a miracle in itself that you can be able to. That is a miracle in itself that you could be able to still laugh, still have the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is your strength that you can still be able to have peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding that you can be able to be in your right mind after all the things that we've experienced in this life. And that's why I sing. I sing because he still deserves all the glory, all the honor, all the praise, despite what we go through. He's still on the throne. The fact that he sent his son to die for our sins is enough. Is enough. And we have to rest in that. That he already conquered the grave. He've all, he's already conquered sin and death. So we have something to be grateful for. We have something to live for. We don't have to be defeated. The trick of the enemy is for us to get our minds focused on the things of this world. Because the enemy glamorized all the things of this world. 
And he wants us to go after this. And he says, look at this. You see this? Don't you want this? All you got to do is bow down. All you got to do is sell your soul. But God has a remnant who has been tested and tried for such a time as this, that we will not bow. We will not waver. We will be anchored in him. We will be rooted and grounded in him. And it was like being in a military, going through physical training, preparing for the battle, prepare for the war, but the the battle has already been won when Jesus Christ, the son rose from the grave. That's why he sent his son to die for our sins. That's why he sent his son. He carried the weight of our burdens and he still carries them. He wants us to cast our cares upon him. He is with us and he is a good God. He's still a good God. And he wants us to get to the point where we're like Job when he finally surrendered. And he said, yea, though you slay me, yet will I trust you, God. I will still trust you with my life. I will still trust you with my family. I will still trust you no matter what, God. I will trust you. Even when everyone else is bowing down to the agenda, everyone else is selling out everyone else is being appeased by darkness when everyone else is lusting after the things of this world when everyone else decides to take the mark of the beast we the ones who have been tested the ones who have been tried will stand firm planted in jesus name in the authority of jesus christ and say, I will not bow. And know that your reward comes from our Father in heaven. We have to press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling. That's all that matters is what God has to give. And what God has to give, no man can take it away. This is why I praise the Lord. This is why I cry the way that I do. Because I'm casting my cares onto him. And I know that he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, and above all that we could ever ask or think. No matter what it looks like, we walk by faith and not by sight. This is what faith is, is believing in the things that are impossible. Believing in the things that we cannot see. And we have to hold fast and be steadfast and not give up. Galatians 6, 9. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we will reap the harvest. If we faint not, we must not faint. That means don't give up. Don't give up. No matter what it looks like. That is what faith is all about. No matter how dark this world is no matter how much wickedness there is in this world no matter what God has allowed because maybe maybe God is doing with you what he did with Job he asked Satan when Satan was in the presence of the Lord he asked have you considered my servant Job have you considered my servant Job put your name there have you considered my servant and maybe he's asking that question. Maybe it's not about what you're doing wrong. Maybe it's about what you're doing right. And maybe it's about where God is pulling you through and taking you to. We're not going to always have all the answers. And sometimes we have to just surrender even in that trying to rationalize, trying to fathom, trying to process everything. Maybe it's just a matter of relinquishing, releasing. That is true trust. That is true surrender. Letting go of our understanding and leaning not unto our own understanding.